stopped eating meat. I think it was around May or April 2020. And I didn't eat meat for nine months. Wow. Yeah, I did. I managed to put it on for that. And then I don't know what happened. I think I was coming to Lagos oh and gosh. I had pepper soup. I just <laughs> snuck one bocotto into my mouth and that was it. <laughs> I was I was back. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm excited to meet you. Uh, so, yeah, what's your name? Uh, Olalu of Fashola. Nice. Okay. So I'm call you Olalu. How was that in London? People pronouncing that. Was that an issue? Well, I mean, it's always been an issue. My, I guess, my entire life not being in Nigeria. Okay. Um, it looks because I think the name looks. It's actually longer than that. So it's Olalu Akiton. Okay. Which is a mouthful, right? So yeah. I think people just see and think, oh my God, how do I pronounce this, right? And it just called me Ola. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I hate Ola, by the way. But, okay. Yeah. Okay. Noted. And what does that mean? What does the name mean? It means the wealth of God that never ends. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. That's nice. So, I so claim, I'm claiming it. Yeah. Amen. We yeah. receive it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I know, obviously, you're not Nigerian, but where are you from? Like, where did you live your life? I am Nigerian. Um, okay, it's so. <laughs> true. You weren't born and raised in Nigeria. Well, uh, I went to secondary school in Nigeria and primary school. So nice. um, I think I am as Nigerian as, okay, maybe not as they come, but yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm Nigerian uh, deep down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I guess I have, I was born in Birmingham um, and then we moved to Switzerland for a bit and then Lagos, went to primary school and high school um, and then moved to the States and went back to the UK. That's a lot of moving. Yeah. How was yeah. Switzerland? What was that like? I was pretty young. Um, the only thing I remember was getting stuck in lifts. Um, I think I got stuck in a lift once and that's all I remember. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that happened to me um, once. Yeah. Back in the that? day. So basically, you know those old school estates? I think we were visiting like an uncle and auntie like in like Stonebridge or wherever. And back in the day, the lifts didn't have sensors. So okay. it literally squashed me. And then since then, I had a phobia of like lifts. So I started taking the stairs. So you take the stairs everywhere you go now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That must be good exercise. What are your steps like? Yeah. I mean, like I've, I've got an over. If it's a nice looking lift, then I can enter. And I'll always make sure I have my phone on me because I know people that have been stuck inside the lift as well for you, hours. You so. do know you don't get a signal in the lift, right? Well, do you know what? Some of them you actually do. Okay. Yeah. I've, no, I've been on the phone a few times and it maintains. Some of them you do. Um, but yeah, that's that's not that's the only memory you have of, of Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. So what age were you when you were there? I think probably about three, four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty young. So what were you? So how many years were you in the UK? Uh, about three years, four years. Okay, not a long time. Not a long time, no. Yeah, oh. and then when I went back, I went back. I think I was twenty-four. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. And I've been there since. And what did you? What were you doing over there? In the UK? Yeah. Uh, so I went to school. So I did my second degree in the UK and just working, really. What did you study? My second degree, I did business and management. Business nice. management. Yeah. It feels like ages ago now. Business management. Um, and my first degree, I did computer information systems with business. Nice. Yeah. And do you feel like those things are helping you with what you're doing now? Probably the business part. So yeah. the so when I was in the States, I went to a tech school um, because my dad wanted, my dad was an engineer um, and he wanted us to go into tech or whatever, or science. Um, so, you know, Nigerian parents are, right? Um, and when I was there, I kind of decided, okay, you know what? Yeah, this ain't for me. Um, mm -hmm. It was either go do football full time or go into business. Okay. Um, and I had a chance to go to a different university to do football but I had to wait a year uh, and I thought I couldn't wait a year like that's just the way I'm, year of my life wasted so I decided to go back to the UK um, and did business and, nice. yeah, and just worked and worked I guess. So you worked and worked and then now we're, we're, you're back in Lagos uh, so how did that happen? Um, so a few years ago about three years ago um, I well, my friend 
uh, shout out to Miss Brown, um, put, asked me to, I guess, try a plant-based, a plant-based diet, a vegan diet. Um, okay. and I was just curious. Um, and I just wanted to, and at that point, I think I was kind of getting bored of eating the same thing over and over and over, especially like the crappy stuff you buy in Tesco and Asda, mm, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and I just thought, okay, you know what, what's the worst that could happen? You know, I try for a month to see how I feel. And yeah, it's been four years since, which yeah, it's crazy. Because I never thought, like, I was one of them people that I used to think, you know, never, like, I would never give up meat. Like, yeah. You need meat to be big and muscly and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Um, four years later. So you've not eaten meat in four years? Nope. Not consciously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, like... <laughs> it could have snuck in somehow. Yeah, right? I mean, you go to, like, this Chinese places and it's like... Uh, uh, and to be fair, like, I was in London once. Uh, I'm not going to name the restaurant, not to, not to shame them. And they, like, served us, like, calamari. And it ended up being actual calamari. Imagine so what? that. It was, it was, they it said it wasn't meant to It be. was supposed to be vegan calamari, so ah. which is made from mushrooms. Yes. But it was actual calamari. Interesting. So like I took a few bites and I'm like, yo, this, <laughs> this is tasting too real. Like I know the plant-based game is like, yo. And, and my friend is like, yeah, this isn't, nah, this, this isn't. So what, maybe it was a vegetarian restaurant then. It wasn't a vegan restaurant it was a normal restaurant with vegan options okay yeah okay and so like we kind of escalated it yeah it should have yeah and yeah um i'm not gonna name them but just not to wow but yeah and that you, was an experience you had a sporty background right you said you mentioned football uh, um yeah so i've always been like into sports like i guess trying so i used to play football in high school and um i played football for my college team in chicago um but the plan was to try, i wanted to go into football full time like mm. i guess like most people right but i guess at that point there wasn't as much money in the states in terms of like football um and i don't think i was maybe i wasn't technically as good as the people that played it full time in the uk right that's probably why i didn't push on i think at that age as well when i went back it was kind of a lost dream so yeah the reason i ask is because veganism and 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 sports sometimes there's so many different opinions in terms of the role that meat and protein plays in performance i know you can get protein uh, from plant-based options but is it as effective or can you eat the amount that you need through plant-based options like how is that doing sports and veganism together i mean i'm not gonna lie like since I became vegan, like my energy levels and like my performance levels, okay, that sounds, my, actual, <laughs> my sport performance levels uh, have been like mad. Like, I'm like, uh, yeah, like you don't, like I don't get tired. Like it's crazy. Really? Like, yeah, it is it's really crazy. Um, and it's, I think it's about education, right? It's about knowing what, where to get what and like what s sources of plants give you what, right? And the thing about plant protein is generally it's pure protein, I guess. Um, so it's probably better for your system than mm -hmm. trying to get it from something that has a whole lot of fat or cholesterol and, you know, things like that, that you can't cut out. Right. Because yeah. if, if you're getting protein from a plant based diet, you're literally getting protein. Right. You're not mm -hmm. getting like protein and cholesterol or protein and fat, you know, which makes a big difference. Right. OK, so I was vegan actually for some time. For how long? Yeah, so, okay. I was at my friend's house. It was uh, during the lockdown period. And he puts on that Netflix, um, that popular Netflix what show. What the hell? Exactly, what the hell. Now, I'm not really normally susceptible to brainwashing. However, <laughs> <laughs> I watched it and he also broke down. He's a very big guy. Like he literally is, he looks like, a bodybuilder, very big, tall. And he was talking about the health benefits of not eating meat. He talked about how it clogs your arteries and all these, everything. He went into detail. That night I was a convert, stopped eating meat. I think it was around May or April, 2020. And I didn't eat meat for nine months. Wow. Yeah, I, did, I managed to put it on for that. And then I don't know what happened. I think I was coming to Lagos oh and gosh. I had pepper soup. I just <laughs> snuck one bocotto into my mouth and that was it. <laughs> I was I was back. But so my experience was 
I, I lost so much. I, I lost 12 kg. Yeah. I put the whole thing back on in Lagos. I'm trying to lose it again. So maybe I'll start taking some Casa Vegan products. So I lost 12 kg. My skin was glorious, even from head to toe. Um, my face was gorgeous. I actually could self save myself. I looked really good. Um, I was lean. I didn't work out so much during that period because I was losing the weight. So I wasn't really able to test what it was like going to the gym, being on that vegan diet. But I can actually agree with you that I felt light, I felt really good, uh, but I just didn't think it was sustainable for me. Because I'm one of those people where it's like, if you have a meal without meat, it feels like something's missing. Yeah, but I think that's why, you know, the concept of Casa Vegan came, came around. Like, okay. just at the end of the day, like I do, like when I became vegan, it was hard to, like you said, eat a meal and not have protein on it, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess it's easy when you're in London because you have a lot of substitutes and alternatives. But I think what, when, like I started conceptualizing the business and stuff, what I realized is a lot of the substitutes have artificial additives, right? Exactly. And which people don't realize. So even though you're cutting out on meat, you're putting in a whole lot of other shit into your system, right? Which yeah. defeats the purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So like what we're trying to do is give you the alternative, but make it 100% natural. Um, so zero artificial additives, yeah. everything is locally sourced, it's locally grown, it's 100% natural, mm -hmm. um, which helps then make that transition easier, right? To say, okay, yes, I want to cut down and eat meat, but I don't want to feel like I'm having a meal without any meat on it, Exactly. Right? which is the whole idea. I think that's really good because you're psychologically um, capturing the issue that a lot of us have. I think the only most popular vegan meal in Nigeria is probably like plantain and egg or maybe like plantain and beans. <laughs> uh, but once you step out of that, everything has a lot of meat in it. So I don't know. Talk to me now about Casa Vegan. Are your products, do you have any Nigerian plant-based products or is it more like continental at the moment? Um. So I guess everything we everything we do has like a, african nigerian flavor okay. in it um because that's what we're trying to do like you know we're not trying to be like beyond meat or trying to be like impossible burger right because first of all they have artificial additives which we don't um but we use local flavors so we use things like iru for example right mm. to give you that local smell nice. local sense local taste um which i find like because we've kind of interacted or done sampling with a lot of foreign chefs yeah they don't necessarily like that idea um but local chefs do um and i feel like you know that's something we're trying to incorporate even more because mm -hmm. at the end of the day that's who we are right and that's the market we're trying to you know be in um but the idea is you know to give it that local taste local feel um so to make it very familiar for people so it's not it doesn't feel like a foreign concept you know you can still use so we have like chunks for example which look like diced beef mm. um and you can use it for like you know vegetable soup nice. you can use it for like you know for your fried rice for your indomie you know because it's like literally like diced meat yeah um and it absorbs you can marinate it you could do whatever you want mm. with it um and to me the texture is you know very close yeah. i guess the song who's eating meat for 50 years or yeah. 30 years or 40 years it takes a while to transition yeah um but it gives you the same cook the same smell the same taste nice. you know a close enough texture yeah um to to help you with you know whatever it is you want to do whether it's to lose weight whether it's to just cut down on your you know meat intake or mm -hmm. whether it's because you have a health issue or whatever it is um that's the idea so do you have some products for me to try because uh, i would love to try um some yeah products. definitely yeah? so we brought you some we nice you, uh, patty and okay. some some meat pie as can well can we get that on the and then let me try some of that because uh, it's been a while since i've had a vegan meal like and so if we want to buy your products now where do we go because i i you're not a restaurant no we're not no so where do we go to get your products um so right now we have uh online source which obviously through instagram our website is opening soon so nice. people can order through our website but the idea is we want to supply you know restaurants we want to supply supermarkets Fantastic. um we're currently speaking to a few supermarkets to mm -hmm. you know start stocking through them Fantastic. um but the idea is we want to put it in restaurants as well so it's mm -hmm. just like me like you can eat meat in different places and in different ways and different flavors, right? And yeah. that's the concept we're trying to recreate, right? 
is it are they frozen products or they're just normal products uh they're, they're, frozen. they're frozen um frozen. so they're right. frozen or chilled um but the idea is we're looking to <clears throat> make something that's a bit more ambient as well because of the market we're in especially yeah. when it comes to like you know shipping and the supply chain especially mm-hmm. across africa yeah um, so the idea is to try and come up with something that's a lot more ambient mm-hmm. but everything we have now is you know frozen or chilled perfect now let me try so what so what do we have here so in there we should have uh, a burger patty uh, which is marinated um, nice. and some oh, fries yeah. uh regular fries i mean yeah <laughs> um so yeah the idea is the patty you can use in a burger obviously but you know you can actually have it as like breakfast as well so like a ah. breakfast sauce um burger yeah. patty thing um okay. instead of, of like a sausage um but it's yeah it's pretty flexible you can marinate it you know it gives you the same texture as uh yeah, as beef me. burger yeah yeah it um, looks it looks like it literally looks like a beef patty um the chips look really really good soft as well it looks like so do you write your ingredients on your packaging yes we do yeah perfect so what's the what's in this beef patty now um so we have it's sweet cassava so everything we use we try and source locally Fantastic. Um, so we local we work with different farmers different um sellers in mm. the local markets um mm-hmm. so it's cassava we we have uh fruit jackfruit um and then inside here spices yeah uh this seasoning really and nice. stuff this is really really like it, it's really nice like i could actually eat this and like you say once you marinate it yeah i mean we've like done a lot of events before where like we've we had the event a few weeks ago yeah. um where it was put in a taco and we had to p- people we did a challenge where we had to guess which one was a beef taco which one was a plant-based beef taco and most i think i'd say 99 percent couldn't tell which was which no way which is amazing yeah this is really good so i'm just gonna like sorry guys this actually is by <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll finish it later. <laughs> so this is fantastic. I love the packaging. Thank you. So let me just finish the beef. Nah, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we've got some good news for you today. Fantastic news. Yes, because I can't wait. we've been hearing everything you've been saying mm-hmm. and we've settled down over here and now we are proud to announce the IMB Concierge Service. Whoop! Yeah. So our concierge service really would help you guys to support you with any problem you have in Nigeria. If you want to start up a business, you need some research done, IMB is here to help you. If you want to see your properties to be checked up on, we can also support you with that. Just anything you need. What are the things that IMB concierge service can do? Personal shopping. Woo! You know, if you've got real estate investments, you need someone to check. Have you got a shop here that you're managing from abroad? We can go and check it out for you. Do you want us to buy you a gift? There's so many things that we can do because we know it's so hard to find people to trust from abroad. That's true. And you can reach the IMB service on yes. our WhatsApp number, yes. which is plus 234-904-549. 9846 nine, eight, eight, four, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. hmm. Yeah, so the idea is like for to give people the same familiarity, the same texture, the same, you know, satisfaction you get from mm-hmm. eating meat, but you know with the better benefits, better nutrition in terms of it actually has higher protein than Fantastic. the it same does, gram yeah. per gram per beef. Fantastic. Um zero cholesterol. Yeah. Good fat, high fiber, mm-hmm. you know, and it's 100% natural. Is it affordable? How much is it? Um, yes, it is. Um, <laughs> define affordable. <laughs> um, what's what's money when it comes to your health, right? Oh, really? Um, exactly. Because that's, that's going to slam us with twelve k, twelve k. Nah, nah, <laughs> not just not twelve k. But I mean, there's a saying that like, you rather you rather spend money on your health before you get to the hospital, right? 100%. And they give you like a big ass bill, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so a pack of four burgers, uh, one hundred and twenty five gram burgers, which is like double the size of that. Okay. A pack of four burgers is five five. 5k 500 mm. which is cheap compared it, to like really? impossible burger which i think goes for about eight ten grand i mean impossible burger is that available in nigeria um in some places right yeah okay so that's an average of like one over 1k 1.2 1.3k per burger well i mean you then look into like packaging you know things like that right manufacturing costs um, okay yeah there's more there's there's, there's a lot of things that go into that it. Go processing into it. costs mm-hmm. staffing costs yeah. diesel 
I mean, oh, here we go. I mean, <laughs> you need to get solar in your house. <laughs> Shout out to Pam Africa. You need to come and get solar in your in, in your in your warehouse as well. I mean, okay, so it tastes good. Um, it looks good. I will definitely become a customer. I can actually say that for a fact. We have your um, tape, so I mean, yeah. Go back. But at the same time, how have you dealt with it? Because the first reaction, I'll be honest with you, I am going to be completely honest with you. The first reaction when I came across you, I was like, this guy is doing a vegan business in Nigeria. Like, who has time for that? Like the market, Nigerians are so distracted by so many things, survival. I mean, why Why would somebody start? It just initially, so do you get people that are like, what are you doing? Like, of course, I mean, this is Nigeria, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course, like you get people that look at you like, like what are you doing like you're like you're mad or something right um but i mean yes it's you know it's not for everybody right um mm -hmm. it's a very niche product it's a very niche market um but there's a market out there you know there's people that are getting health health conscious you mm -hmm. know there's people that have health issues um that need to cut down that are spending billions you know on medical bills um without having alternatives in terms of trying to cut down on Animal yeah. intake you know there's people that you know <clears throat> used to live in the diaspora that are coming back you know that are more aware more educated mm -hmm. about the needs and the the benefits right so i think yeah you know initially yes looking at it from the outset it looks like okay what well, you know this is a bit bonkers right but i think you know a lot of what we're trying to do is educate and create that awareness because i mean you need to know there's an option you need to know there's a problem you need to know there's an option and you need to understand what the benefits are for mm. it, for something to become valuable to you right yeah um, and if you take a look at you know the global trends um a lot of countries that are now like very big on plant-based diets never used to be right mm. and if you look at trends you know trends are trends right they're mm -hmm. trends for a reason um and all of these things you know historically go from either from the states to the uk to asia and then to africa right and that is hmm. the pattern um so is meat bad or is it the is it the sort so right now most of the meat we have in the supermarkets in the uk is like not grass-fed it's not organic meat and if you are going to buy organic meat in the supermarket it's a lot more expensive it can almost be double the price obviously you see it smaller the size because it's not been pumped with antibiotics and steroids and the rest so sometimes you even see like visually you're paying double the price or something smaller so it kind of puts people off by the end of the day is it meat that's bad or is it just the way the cow is reared or is that the issue because i can't imagine god would put animals on this earth <laughs> And meat on this earth. I mean, have you tried? I mean, it's been four years for you, but Nigerian goat meat is really, really good. I'm not joking. That's why I put the 12 kg back on. It is really, really, really good. So I just want to, I just feel sometimes that if we had, in Nigeria, sometimes the, it's almost better. They're free, they, they're free range. They roam around. They're grass fed. What do you think? I mean, I don't think meat is bad, right? Mm. Um, I think the issues are how some of the animals are raised, you know, yeah. the amount of chemical that goes into it, you know, the, the lack of transparency that people have when they buy meat. They don't know where it's come from. They don't know how it's been raised. They mm. don't know what's gone into it. Mm. And then you're putting that into your system, right? But then the other thing is, you know, the the health aspects, you know, you're talking about, you know, people that, you know, we're vegan for like a few years come back you know start eating meat and you know they gain weight you yeah. know they you know it's and you know all those things add up right we're talking about doing that over for 40 years 50 years 60 years right yeah. and all of those things you know your arteries get blocked and you know yes. it has a knock-on effect over time yes it might you might enjoy it in the short term but i think the problem is not doing it in a balanced way right we're mm -hmm. not trying to say okay you know if you want to eat meat that's fine eat meat but then they'd be conscious of what you're eating mm -hmm. where it's coming from and be conscious of the fact that you know yes you need to cut it down and there are alternatives out there to help you do that mm -hmm. right to do it in a more balanced way you know one thing is the source another thing is things like sustainability you know things like climate change you know mm -hmm. i mean let's not get too 
I guess, tree hogging at this point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, There's many aspects to this game. You know, I'm very big on holistic health. I talk about it a lot and things like that. Supplements, a bit of a supplement queen as well and things like that. So, yeah, there's there's so many aspects to this health game. Uh, um, But where does it stop for you? Like, do you drink alcohol or do you have other principles that you have in your life that you do or don't do? I don't drink. No, I stopped drinking. You stopped drinking um, as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's not because I became vegan or anything. I think that was just a personal choice. Um, mm. So I just got to a point where, I mean, I think it, maybe it's it's part of it, right? Because I think you get to a point where you're just very conscious of, you know, what you're trying to eat, you know, the type of life you're trying to live, you know, the the your lifestyle in general. Because, I mean, it's pointless. So like I used to, be very active in terms of like i'd play football like three four times a week i'd go to the gym like five times a week and then you go out on a saturday and it's just like you know bottles and bottles and bottles and then sunday morning it's like you just feel like you've wasted the whole week right and i just felt like you know what's the point like you're just i'm basically putting all this work to throw it away on a weekend right mm-hmm. and it just made no sense mm-hmm. and then the bill comes back on a saturday night boy and you look at your account on a sunday morning and you're like <laughs> what the hell happened how many people were on that table <laughs> was like, the girls even worth it i know i only remember going into that club with two people how do we get 50 people on that table and i'm paying for everybody right it's like yeah that's not it's not sustainable right i could put that money into mm-hmm into better things right Mm -hmm. um yeah so i just made a conscious decision at that point so interesting so so what's the future you spoke about speaking to supermarkets getting products in there do you think that you would try to expand in other countries or would you try to go down the restaurant route where do you think the brand is going in the next three to five years um yeah so i think obviously for now we're trying to get into supermarkets and i think the idea is you know get people a lot of people to sample the product um Mm -hmm. because you don't People have, uh, especially Nigerians or Africans, they have a certain, they have a very closed mindset. I think yeah. if you can educate people, show them that it's actually a viable option, yeah. then that opens a lot more doors. Um, but the idea is to, you know, supply supermarkets, go into restaurants, but we're looking at, you know, other countries as well. Because I think Nigeria is uh, it's a slow burner for very, di- for different reasons, right? The mindset the politics you know there's a lot of things that make things slowly burn but i think there's a lot of low-hanging fruits in terms of like other countries like kenya or egypt um and those are the places that we're looking at to to expand into egypt i went to egypt while i was vegan and it was horrible i had to become um they did there was nowhere that had vegan options or you had to become vegetarian and i don't eat fish at all but to survive in egypt i had to eat salmon like every day how, because, how far back was this? Um, 2020. Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. Like, one thing I would love, I don't know if you'd be open for it. Like, I want a vegan recipe book with Nigerian recipes. I love Nigerian foods so much. I want, when I used to be vegan in the UK, I'll go out to eat, you know, Amala, Agusi, whatever. And I'd be like, put Amala. no meat. <laughs> Amala. And I'll be like, put no meat. They'd be like, huh? I'm like, put no meat. They'd be like, confused. <laughs> What they would they wouldn't even listen to me. They would now bring the meat on a separate plate and bring my food. And I'd always have to give the meat to the person that I'm with. Because I'm like, these people just don't understand that a Nigerian is like an abomination to them sometimes. Yeah. So I want a book where it's like, okay, I want to make my pan and jam and a gussie, um, but in a vegan way. I know and I know it sounds like just remove the meat, but to you, if I wanted to make pan and jam and a gussie in a vegan way, am I allowed to use meat broth? Or is that still unhealthy? No, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's cheated. <laughs> but, but I think the thing is like, you know, what like a lot of the research I, I found that helped me like when I was transitioning was not to be drastic about it, right? Mm. Like, you know, if for example, initially I'd have, I don't know, like I used to love shortbread, for example. Like, so even, okay, I switched my milk, which was easy because you could get a lot of plant-based milk that kind of do very similar, have very similar tastes, right? But I'd still used to eat shortbread or I still used to have like, you know, my coffee with regular milk in it um, because I used to have like Bailey's coffee like every Saturday morning, right? Um, So like I wake up, I make my coffee and it would have Bailey's in it. And I did that for a few a few weeks, right? Because you don't want to just go from zero to 100. That mm-hmm. just makes it very hard. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, initially, that's fine. Like, if you're taking out the meat and you want that 
you want the broth in it and that helps you then yeah. i mean it's about doing it slowly right not mm. just it's not a diet it's a lifestyle change so mm. it needs to be very transitional it needs to be very intentional i guess yeah yeah and in just in general on the personal level how have you found lagos uh how have you found it <laughs> Um, <laughs> we're talking about business here right um, I mean from a business perspective it's yeah it's very frustrating I mean like there's just a lot of things that I don't know consciously or subconsciously that are in place to just block you mm -hmm. um, and I think it obviously makes you stronger yes like but I mean it shouldn't be there in the first I don't want to swear <laughs> in the first place right because if it wasn't there like there'd be so many people that have like, there's so many people that have great ideas, mm -hmm. right? But there's just so many blockers that stop them from executing or implementing those things, right? Yeah. And they end up like, I don't know, moving to a different country and doing it there or something, right? Which makes no sense. Mm. Um, so from a business perspective, it's been very frustrating. Um, mm. But I mean, yeah, there's been people that, you know, I've met along the way that, you know, have supported one way or another. And I, I think if you meet the right people, then you know you you get the support you need and i think it's just being open to put yourself out there because a lot of nigerians are very proud nigerians don't like to ask can not necessarily ask for help but i mean collaborating is a good thing you know because yes. you know because you you don't have to be competition with everybody like, exactly there's enough market out exactly. there exactly for everybody to have a piece of the pie exactly like, and yeah. people just don't realize that okay and on a personal level have you found <laughs> i was hoping you would that <laughs> Um, on a personal level, I would level, have been doing my job if I didn't pry. Um, <laughs> How <are> the babes? <laughs> I mean, I've been focused on work. <laughs> I've been focused on work. Really? Yeah. I mean, Nigerian women are gorgeous, aren't they? They're so of course. I mean, Nigerian yeah. women, black women. Yeah. yeah shout general. out to all the black women. Of course. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. I mean, did you ever? Did you not get distracted when you first came? Were you partying? A lot of us were You're up and down. Me hot now. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. the thing is, like, I've, like, I mean, I've partied, trust me. Like, I've got stories for days. Really? Um, I want to hear one. Nah. Give me just one, one long um, story. No, nah, but, like, when I was, like, so, like, when I first started working, working, and, like, making good money, probably mm -hmm. when I was, like, I don't know, 22, 23. Yeah. Um, I was making like investment banking money. Like, yeah. So it used to be like, yeah, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even on a Monday night sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. you still go to work. And I mean, so I've done all of that. Right. And, you know, I've done the weekends away where you just, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> now it's like, yeah, exactly. So now it's not. And I think because I'm not really, because right now I don't really, I don't drink. So I mm. guess a lot of the, there's no really, there's not much attraction in terms of, especially going out in Lagos because everybody just goes out to drink or eat mm -hmm. or Definitely. smoke or something, Literally. right? Um, yeah. And yeah, I think I like more of an experience and more of a culture now, right? Um, mm. And you don't really get many of those around here. That's a good point because whilst I was that period, I was vegan. I also didn't drink alcohol as well. And I, I find that going to games nights and things, I was still very late. I, I tend to quite... I have quite a high personality anyway, so I could do well with that. However, going to the club when you don't drink, you just feel like, what are you guys doing? You're so like, conscious of what's going on This doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Like, what are you, what? The club almost looks like, your brain is just in some logical mode. Like, you know, so I, I find that what you just said right now is very interesting because it means that subconsciously you start gravitating away from those activities and start going to more... Like you say, cultural activities, experiences, nature, yeah. things like that. And so I find that very interesting. And I think I'm at that stage as well where the club is the same thing over and over again. You know, it's not as if you even meet people when you go. You're all... nah, everybody's just sat there. And yeah. I'm thinking, why are you guys here if you don't even want to talk to each other? Exactly. Like, I mean, it's madness. Why did you come out, dress well, and then a the guy approaches you and you don't want to talk to him? Like, or vice versa. It makes no sense. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting. Okay. Um, have you been to any other African countries? Uh, yeah. Um, so Ghana, of course. Uh, Gambia. Senegal. Mm hmm where else i think that's it um i'm trying to go to kenya for business because i think kenya is like a good place to explore mm -hmm. um obviously south africa yeah 
Um, but I want to do Africa. I haven't really done a lot of Africa consciously anyway. Yeah. Because um, people just put so much emphasis on, you know, going around in the States or in Europe and stuff. I mm-hmm. just feel like there's so many things to do in Africa that people don't know. Like when I was in Senegal, for example, I did like a, a lion walk which you oh. wouldn't be able to do anywhere else in the world, which is mad. Oh. Um, and there's like this big ass lions, like really? <laughs> literally huge. And you could just walk with them. Really? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, Were they restrained? No, nah, it was just there. Like you had a stick because I think they trained them with a stick. So you had to hold them to the stick all the time. No matter what happened, you don't let go of that stick. But they were literally just around you. It was mad. It was good. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So like that's, I mean, yeah, like there's so many things to do and people just like want to go into the cold for some reason. It's like, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. And it's like you say in Lagos, all we do is just party, drink and like, and eat. And so, and baby make. I'm not shaming, I'm not shaming any of that, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and but, baby I, mean, I say Nigerians, all they know how to do is baby making and, and partying. That I think it distracts them too much. I thought if they did less of that and less of the drinking, they would be more conscious of the environment and fight a bit more against the system. Like you said, that we have a disabling environment here for business. And I think we distract ourselves too much with our hedonistic lifestyle. That's what I've observed from being here. Yeah, I think maybe the the stress doesn't help. Yes. I think because there's so much stress, people, the only way they, they have to let loose is all of that. Right? Exactly. Which kind of yeah. like... It's an ongoing cycle, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And the other thing I find is like with all the money in Lagos, like there's very little investment in the things that actually matter, which mm-hmm. is crazy because mm-hmm. it's like every restaurant I go to and try and speak to the owner, they're Lebanese or Chinese. And I'm thinking, <sighs> wow, like it's mind boggling. I'm like with all the money in Lagos, there's people that have like 50 Bentleys. And like 25 houses in Banana Island. Like, why? How many houses Jack can you actually live in? Mm-hmm. Like, all those houses get molded. Mm-hmm. Oh. I was in there for like two oh, months. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's like, why like all the nice restaurants owned by foreigners? So is that is that the case? Because somebody tried to tell me once that sometimes the Lebanese are a front. That is, and the Nigerian owned, but the Lebanese managed. I don't know, but you've obviously had more experience. I well, I don't think so. Okay, but maybe yeah. Yeah, I don't think so because a lot of the restaurants I go to, they're owned by the Lebanese people. Lebanese people. Yeah, they do. They they are very good at the service business. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no 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 shame in the yeah. game. I mean, they're owning it and they're doing it very. They're well. doing it well. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. We should be able to. I mean, learn from them more, even Facts. like duplicate or I mean, do something different um, yeah. or at least start somewhere. Right. There's nothing. There's a lot of young boys out there with a lot of money. Right. Yeah. Why do we have to do the same thing over and over again? Like, I agree men, with you. Right? And, I, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. Well, OK. Interesting. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. You definitely me. have to come again when Doctor is here as well. And and hopefully you've got more products that we'll, we'll try. But honestly, I 100 percent, if you're in Lagos, recommend his products. I'm actually going to off camera get an order for you. Um, Thank you. or frozen products for my house because I'm moving in today and I want to stock my freezer with some goods no, and we'll restart we'll my health journey so um, yeah um, thank you and we'll have you again soon thank you I'll bring my sunglasses next time <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel yeah, left out <laughs>